In this video, we're going to be taking a look at Shakti for the Legacy Collection. She's part of a series of Geonosis Arena Battle 2 packs that were released at the time. Uh, so there ended up being like two waves of those packs all together. Most of them were one Jedi and then a battle droid of some sorts, whether it's the B1 battle droid, super battle droid, droidica, any of those sorts. Uh, but some of them, especially the later ones, I think Shakti was part of the second wave technically. And this was at the very end of the Legacy Collection. So Shakti, I do not have the other action figure that came with her, which was a Geonosian Warrior. But I do have uh, one that's very similar, and it's uh, the Geonosian Warrior she comes with utilizes the same body. And that's the Sun Fek action figure. As far as I could tell, the only real difference between Sun Fek here and then the Warrior that she comes with is just a little bit more articulation, I think, mainly in the legs here. Other than that, it's pretty much the same exact action figure. Uh, I wouldn't mind getting that Geonosian Warrior at some point, but it's kind of hard to differentiate if, oh, is this the right one that actually comes with the Shock T, or is it uh, something else? Hard to differentiate sometimes. Uh, so perhaps I'll get that at some point, but there's really not a significant rush. And for the longest time, I said to myself that I was only going to do videos for complete packs on the channel. Uh, that's why I haven't got around to characters like Lord Malavol yet. I think I'm at the point where, you know, I can always do a second video if I ever end up completing it down the road. And especially for some of these characters like Shock T, I don't think a lot of people will be upset seeing a second round of her on the channel at some point. Or a second take or... Maybe if it's years from now, uh, it'll be a different perspective. We'll see. Uh, but a lot of people consider this to be the definitive Shock T action figure, and uh, there's definitely a strong case for that. I did mention in the Revenge of Sith Shock T video that I think that one's best in terms of like affordability, and it's a good enough action figure. But if you're looking for probably the best of the best, this one might be it because of the articulation. The paint job is pretty good. And she is specific to Attack of Clones, and the way you can differentiate with that is because of the way her eyes are. Uh, they're all just, her eyes are just totally black. There's no pupils or uh, irises or anything like that. It's just totally black. Uh, but it's a minor detail. Shakti's appearance does change a little bit between Attack of Clones and Revenge of Sith. Similar to some of the other characters, like uh, Kit Fisto, for instance. I guess they update the uh, costumes and things like that. So they definitely paid attention to detail on this one. And I'm not sure if uh, this round of uh, Geonosian Arena Battle uh, 2 packs were exclusive to any stores. I could have swore they were exclusive to Target, but I'm not sure. I do recall seeing these at Target. And specifically this set even uh, back in 2010, just before uh, Legacy Collection was being phased out. And to think back then, they were probably only like anywhere between 10 to $20 for those sets. And sometimes they were on clearance even for less than that. And they were in huge abundance at most of the stores I saw them at. It's incredible. Nowadays, these are very expensive packs. Most people are not going to invest into them. I do have some of the action figures from some of the packs, but most of them I have are not complete. Uh, one instance is like Count Dooku. But we'll save those for future videos. Let's take a closer look at Shock T here. So I think the paint job could be a little more crisp. Uh, it's definitely not quite as... Uh, defined I think as like the Revenge of the Sith one. I do like uh, the darker skin tone she has though. I think that is a little more accurate for her. And same with the uh, color of her head tails there. You can see the significant differences between the two movies. And then, uh, other than some of the articulation points, uh, mainly in the arms, and I think maybe the ankles here. Nope, not the ankles. Mostly just the arms. 
just reutilizing the same tooling. Has the uh, stripes on her head tails there. Kind of a dark gray. And some grays at the ends here. I do like how they did the back of her head tail here. I think the coloring was done a lot different than on the Revenge of Sith figure. Yeah. You can see the significant difference. As for the rest of her robes, it's uh, pretty standard for her. Much more darker in color. She does have the soft fit skirt here. And she does have the paint and nails at the end. I did mention that's something we don't typically see on the Hasbro Star Wars figures. Uh, Stasa Lee from the Legacy Collection also has that. And then the Shakti kind of does as well. Then she has these ribbons, or a ribbon. It's draped around her neck there. Or, uh, what is that, a sash or something like that, I think is what they call it. And it has some nice textured details on that. Of course, her gauntlets there. Very nice. Uh, for her pants, I think it's just solid colors. Yeah. Same as her uh, shirt there. Or her tunic. And then she has light color boots. In terms of her articulation, she is super articulated. She has the ball joint at the head, which has a pretty good range of motion despite the head tails. Pretty much get into some decent poses. It's not 100%, but it's good enough for what it is. I'd rather sacrifice a little bit of the mobility to have the head tails perfect than vice versa. Now she does have hinge at the shoulders, and then she does have hinged elbows for this action figure. Which is very nice and swivel wrists and it's the same articulation for both arms uh, swivel waist yeah then swivel hips then hinge knees and I don't think any ankle articulation yeah In terms of accessories, she's kind of light. Uh, she just comes with a lightsaber. No data pad or anything like that. And I think it's pretty much the same exact lightsaber that comes with the Revenge of the Sith figure. Well, let's see how they look. Yeah. Just a slight repaint of it. And because it's a repaint, that means you're able to take the lightsaber blade off. Which is something we didn't really see so much anymore by the time of the Legacy Collection. Very rare thing. And she does have a hole on her belt where you can plug in the hilt. Let's see if this will work. Yeah, kind of. Sometimes I kind of miss this design from Hasbro. Oftentimes they include uh, just the one lightsaber for the Jedi and no alternative unignited hilt or anything. And if they're adamant about only including one lightsaber, you think they could at least make it where the blade can be popped out. And then they can carry the hilt. Wouldn't mind that.
But I think that's pretty much all I can tell you about Shock T here from the Legacy Collection. Of course, Sun Fact here will get his own video at some point. They do look pretty good side by side. As far as I can tell, I pretty much have the complete pack anyway. And I think the Geonosha Warrior she comes with basically comes with the same exact accessories. A lot of the action figures in those two packs were uh, repacks or retools, similar to Shock T here. But there were a few new ones here and there, especially the more uh, obscure Jedi, like the one that comes with the Count Dooku. Uh, I'm trying to think what his name is. He's the one that throws Anakin the green saber while he's on top of the reek there. Uh, you probably know who I'm talking about. That is one action figure I do hope to get at some point, but it's very expensive. And speaking of expensive, uh, would I recommend this shock to you for your collection? I would, uh, but she is very expensive. And I didn't pay too much for this. I've had this shock tea since I think 2020 or so, 19 or 20. And I think I only paid maybe $30 for her free shipping, which was not a bad deal at all. I knew when I saw that this is probably as good as I was going to get. And sure enough, I was. If you buy the pack brand new, you're probably going to be spending... Uh, at least a hundred dollars at this point seems like a lot of those packs go for prices like that uh, if you find shock tea loose you might find one for like fifty dollars which i think is pretty expensive like i said if you're on a budget and you want a shock tea that's good enough i would say just get this revenge of sith one it's pretty much the same exact one just minus some articulation and a little bit of a different paint job but if you want the the best of the best and price is no factor for you then yes, I would say go ahead and get this one. And if price really is no factor for you, I would say just get the pack brand new. But despite all that, I still hope to get all those Geonosian Arena 2 packs at some point. Or at least complete some of the sets that I do have that are incomplete. We'll see. But happy uh, the Shock T is a part of my collection. And she's one of my favorite characters. But anyways, that concludes this review. I hope you enjoyed it. Stay tuned for plenty more reviews in the future. There will always be more to come. If you haven't already, please like the video and subscribe to the channel. I always appreciate all your support. And check out some of the links in the description if you haven't done so already. As always, thanks for watching.